Is more rake better? We're about to find out. Recently, GG increased their rake at high stakes games and the high stakes players have organized a boycott. Being a high stakes player myself for very many years and owning and operating an online poker site, I have a lot of thoughts on this matter. So we're gonna get into it. Today we're gonna talk about what happened, why GG might have made this decision, how rake impacts the games. We'll actually get into some win rate math. It'll be quite simple, don't worry. And we'll talk about why I'm unfortunately very scared uh, about this move. Let's get started. So this was brought to my attention quite recently on Twitter by George YMB, who tweeted out how GG has almost doubled their high stakes rake and the players are organizing a boycott. Now, here's the rake table. What we're looking at is the big blinds per hundred spent in rake by each seat at a six-handed table. What that means is if you're sitting in one of these seats, every time you've played 100 hands, you've paid this much in rake in terms of big blinds. We're actually looking at specifically 2550 or $5,000 buy-in, no limit hold'em. Of the high stakes games that saw the rake increases, this is the one where rake is the highest. As you move up a little bit higher, rake goes down proportional to the big blind, obviously still goes up in dollar value. So to be honest, the first thing I thought when I saw this table was that I was shocked how high the rake already was previously. I was out of touch with the GG's rake structure because I didn't play there. Uh, seven big blinds per hundred per seat in a high stakes game is insane, but so is four. Uh, four is already crazy compared to what I've been used to my whole career playing on other poker sites. The really interesting thing and what I was struck by is that so far they've been charging four and actually getting a lot of action. So it's been kind of working. And I think this is part of what GG took into account when they, they made their decision to increase rake further. We'll get into those reasons in a moment. First, I want to talk about this boycott. In the past, players have tried to organize boycotts against changes from poker sites and essentially to the best of my knowledge always failed what ends up happening is you can't organize everybody there's no poker player union or or anything like that that, that gets people organized it's just individuals starting these movements and hoping that people come along with them but in a scenario like this you know you get a bunch of winning players to stop playing and then you have just losing players left potentially playing there's a lot of incentive for you know somebody to cross the picket line essentially or somebody who's not already organized here to not get organized because there are games that they can go take advantage of because this is such a small community you know in the past people would say like all sit and go players are boycotting poker stars for whatever i mean i made this one up because they were trying to cover all different stakes uh the player pool was massive but um like george said here you know it's 90 players that have been organizing this and 90 players is not that many because it's a high stakes community they're pretty tight knit people know each other if you don't know somebody else you know somebody who knows them pretty much because of that i think their chances of continuing to boycott if that's what they choose to do as an organization i think it's higher than than we've seen in the past the reason that i'm pessimistic about this boycott all of these players were already playing on gg when the rake was almost 10 times higher than it was everywhere else. So what that tells me and what that tells GG is that they're not gonna stay away forever on principle because if they would, they would have already done so since the rake was already so much higher than elsewhere. They didn't stay away because they could still be profitable in these games because the games were good. If you don't know already, GG is now industry leader. 10 years ago, especially, PokerStars kind of had a monopoly and GG has seen massive growth for a number of reasons, which is not the purpose of this video. So if GG thinks they can, even with this rake increase, keep the games, the most beatable high stakes games available online, they believe the players will come back or continue to play. They didn't anticipate this boycott, obviously. I wanna talk for a minute about high stakes games in general and the costs of running them and the revenue generated by high stakes games. Obviously when you're playing in a higher stakes game, you're paying more in absolute rake, even at the other sites, even on stars, for example, but you're paying far less in big blinds per hundred. The rake in big blinds per hundred at micro stakes is massive, but the reason those games have continued to be able to run is because they're very soft. Traditionally, as you move up in stakes, the games get tougher. And so you can't have a, you know, 20 big blind per hundred pre-rake win rate like you potentially can at, let's say 50 NL. Through being a, a high stakes player and getting to meet people who worked in the industry and then being a, an operator and meeting people who worked in the industry, I know that for sites like Full Tilt and Poker Stars, who used to have all of the big games, the, the large games are not profitable for them. They're a marketing expense. They view them as a marketing expense. 
you know, running 10 tables of the same stakes, it doesn't cost them money. So any rake they're generating there, you would think is, is just kind of free extra cash flow. But the difference is you have, first of all, costs for deposits. The larger the deposits, the larger the costs. And these people who are playing, let's say 100, 200 or depositing $500,000 on the site, you're going to pay a pretty hefty fee to most payment providers. Moreover, and perhaps more importantly, high stakes players demand a higher level of customer service and not just customer service, but a focus on game integrity. I know PokerStars puts a lot of money into game integrity and a lot of those resources, the game integrity team's resources go towards these high stakes games. Many sites we've seen in the past have actually eliminated all games above 510. That's actually a pretty common thing that you'll see amongst smaller sites is they just go up to 2.5 or they go up to 5.10 and then that's the highest stakes that they offer because they can't run the higher games profitably. Some large companies like GG, but not GG specifically, uh, within poker and outside of poker, sometimes they make decisions poorly because they have people in, in leadership positions or, or high up positions who are not very sharp. I always assumed if somebody was, you know, at a high position in a big company, they knew what they were doing and they, they were excellent at figuring things out. That's not always the case. And so sometimes businesses make decisions that they think will be best or that they haven't fully thought out and they don't work out. The reason that I'm worried about this is because I don't think GG is one of those companies. I think from what I know about GG, from what I know about GG leadership and the way that they make decisions, they have a lot of data, they look at their data and they, they have a plan with it. So what is GG trying to do here? Well, I can only guess, but they have seen that players are willing to play in the higher rate games than, than they offer elsewhere. The other thing that they do at GG is they distribute rake back in a less transparent way than other sites, which I personally don't like, but they distribute rake back more to losing players than to winning players. So whatever their algorithm they're using, losing players get more of the rake back than winning players. And so if you charge more rake, but you give a bunch of it back and you think the, the method in which you give it back promotes more play, then that can be better than not charging as much rake. You can, you can end up charging the same amount of net rake through higher gross rake and more rake back. And that's actually at Run It Once Poker, we had a higher gross rake than Poker Stars, but a lower net rake because we used our extra gross rake to distribute via Splash the Pot and other methods that we thought were really exciting and fun for everybody. So one thing I wanna talk about there, if you go back 10 years, most of the rake back programs rewarded volume the most. Uh, and they were kind of led by Poker Stars and their Supernova Elite program, where the highest volume players got a ton of rake back. And if you were low volume, which are more recreational players, you didn't get that much. And that was kind of the norm. And that was what, it, what was expected by Poker Pros. Now, when we launched Runner Once Poker, I was a little bit nervous because we were going with a system that was more flat. Splash the pot kind of is equal opportunity for everybody at the table. I was confident that if you explain to the players, especially as time has gone on and games have gotten tougher, look, we need recreational players for the games. These are, they're the lifeblood of these games. And if we give them more rewards, we think you're going to, they're going to play more often and you're going to see a benefit uh, from that because, you know, more of them, the game is better for you. And players understood that and they have kind of shifted from 10 years ago to today to understanding that it is okay to give more rewards to recreational players. We do really need them to have a good experience. And GG took it further than we did. We, we kind of were equal opportunity. GG gives more to the recreational players, which I actually think is better, but we were kind of afraid to do that uh, because of where things were. Where I fear this crosses over into is, you know, now they are changing things in such a way that maybe they're giving more of this rake back to recreational players, but also through this increase in rake, they're pushing a lot of pros out of the games entirely. And so recreational players are gonna be playing in softer games on average than they used to. Recreational players are gonna lose less than they used to, even with the higher rake, potentially, and then potentially have a better experience. Uh, again, we'll get into some numbers shortly. The problem is now, it's hard for them to say, well, we're doing this so that recreational players are having a better experience and we get more and more recreational players in the game so that then you can benefit off of that because that last part, the then you can benefit off of it, is not entirely true necessarily. It, it might not be true because the rake is so high, it's hard for them to benefit off of it at all. Is GG trying to create a better experience for recreational players? My guess is yes. My guess is their, their primary focuses here are, well, 
I should say this, their primary focus is increasing their bottom line in the long term. I think they're doing this through charging more rake for the games that run. And because they're kind of pushing some pros out of the games, having a softer average game quality. What I don't know is if they intend to push the rake so high that there are no pros left, or if they're just testing the threshold. And I think, well, they played at four big blinds per 100. I think we can make the game quality good enough that they'll still play at seven big blinds per 100. And now the recreational players are having a little bit better of experience, and now we're making more money off of the games. So before I go any further with that, let's actually look at an example of, of rake and what it does to win rates and what it does potentially to the ecosystem. The one thing I want you to note is at four big blinds per 100 per player, they were already not allowing for reg battles, which means one pro against another pro, each thinking they have this light edge. Because if they're each paying four big blinds per 100, it's just not worth the, it. You can have a reg battle anywhere. They can go to ACR, they can go to Poker Stars. Not many people are, are trying their luck against another great player paying that much rake. But here's an example of a game that might have run at six max. There's one recreational player and he's losing 30 big blinds per 100 pre-rake. Again, that means at 25.50, every 100 hands that are played, he loses 30 times $50, which is $1,500 if I did that correctly. And then the rest of the table is filled with pros. We have their pre-rake win rates at 88662. And then once they all pay four big blinds per 100 in rake, the, the losing player is now going to negative 34. We have two winners at four big blinds, which is a modest but, but decent win rate. We have two at two big blinds, which is kind of not great, but still winning. And then we have one pro who's actually losing in the game probably doesn't think he is. So first I should say, this is entirely made up scenario. I haven't data mined GG's games and analyzed the player pool makeup. This is an example of how a game might've looked. And now we're gonna look at how it will look post change. So if we take that same game and we change the rake from four big blinds per hundred to seven big blinds per hundred, the losing player, instead of losing 34 big blinds per hundred is now losing 37 big blinds per hundred, not a big difference in, in their experience. The two pros who are winning at four big blinds are now only winning at one big blind. So they're still winning, but it's a very, very modest amount of winning. Their variance is gonna be very high. Obviously they can't know they have this win rate. And then the three other pros are losing, one of them losing you know, reasonably significantly. So this game as it was can no longer run under the new rake structure. I mean, it can, but these pros are going to make more informed decisions. They're not gonna play in a game where they're essentially breaking even, maybe losing one big blind per hundred. So what does GG think is going to happen? And that's, that's the big question mark. The one thing that I think would be kind of the ideal scenario that GG might hope for is this. There'll be three recreational players at a table and three pros. And I've made up these win rates, but you can see that one recreational player is only a small loser in this game pre-rake. And then two are medium losers, uh, losing 12 big blinds per 100 pre-rake. And then you have three winning players. Now, obviously the game quality has gone up because instead of one recreational player and five pros, you have three and three here. Because the game quality has gone up, the losing players are losing less. So even after rake, even after the very high rake, the most one of these players is losing is 19 big blinds per 100. And you compare that to our first table where at lower rake, one player was losing 34 big blinds per 100. This is a better experience for those recreational players. They are losing less. And actually, because they're not up against as many pros, they are having a better experience, like outsmarting people at the table on average. You've got two pros winning at four big blinds per 100. That's where the two better pros were winning in the first game, and then you've got one pro who's actually losing post-rake at negative two big blinds. Now, I'm ignoring rake back, which is not the accurate picture, but like I said, this is supposed to be simple math just to give you the idea. So here's another example of what they might be hoping for. Here is instead of three recreational players, there are four at the table and only two pros. Similarly, now these four recreational players are having lower loss rates, even post-rake, and these two pros are actually doing reasonably well at six big blinds, which was actually better than with one recreational player and five pros. I think this scenario won't happen. I think it'll actually be the three and three if if win rates work out this way because that extra pro is gonna see the opportunity and, and take that seat. The kind of prerequisite for these games to happen is that you need more recreational players to run the same number of games as you could before. And I think what GG is banking on is that because these recreational players are gonna encounter fewer pros and have a, a lower loss rate, they're gonna have more winning experiences and they're gonna be more likely to come back. And so they, I believe that they think they'll get and keep more recreational players under this rake system. Now this last scenario 
is an interesting one because it's possible that their plan is not to to have this, you know, three and three or four and two game. It's possible that they really are intending to drive out the pros. And I think through driving out the pros, they can they can really ramp up their acquisition and retention of recreational players and essentially just have games with all losing players. And so you can see here, we have six recreational players at the table with various pre-rake win rates. None of them are winning or losing that much. And post-rake, we've got one that's breaking even, the rest are losing, but a lot of them have very modest loss rates. And so they're gonna have more winning experiences. They might have a better time. I think this is what Gigi's thinking. I'm, this is not me saying that this is what will happen or that this is what should happen or that this is a great idea by them. I'm trying to get inside their heads and I think they're looking at one of these scenarios happening. Now, if they're looking at this last scenario, which is they don't want any pros in the games, then they're not gonna mind the boycott, are they? Really, as far as their bottom line, this all comes down to really two assumptions. Uh, one, the assumption that they're gonna be able to get and keep more recreational players if they are losing less often and are playing in softer games. And then two, are the pros going to behave rationally? Meaning, are they going to play in the games if they can have a post-rake win rate, even if they are upset by the changes, even if they object to the changes morally, vote with their wallets in the way that benefits their own wallets. I don't think GG could have made these changes three to five years ago because they were not as dominant as they are today. But now that GG has, has amassed such a lead in, in the high stakes games, they feel like they can, they can kind of push this. So many years back, before I started Run Once Poker, we, we actually started it because I was afraid that poker stars, who had the monopoly at the time, were pushing people more towards low edge games and potentially unbeatable games. There was a variant called Beat the Clock that, was, that they no longer had, they discontinued it. It was basically like a time cash game that they structured as a tournament that had very high rake and not many people could win, in my opinion, in it. And then there were spinning goes, which became super popular. They're hyper turbos, so there's not much edge to be had. And if the rake increases, they're not gonna be winners. So I feared a future in online poker where it just became kind of like a casino, another casino game where nobody wins, but it's still fun, so people still come and play. And being an online poker professional, teaching online poker professionals, um, that thought made me very sad, and that was actually the impetus for trying to do something about it. I'm scared once again for the same reason, because if GG is correct that this move is going to be better for their bottom line, whether it's through reducing the number of pros or actually eliminating pros from their games potentially in the long term, there's not much of a reason for other sites not to follow suit, assuming they can support the games. This will create a window of opportunity for other sites to try to take these pros from these high stakes games. And I think the key and, and whether or not these other sites will succeed in, in kind of stealing these games from GG is if the pros are vocal and the recreational players follow them because they also don't agree morally with just increasing the rake until, uh, until games are unbeatable. My theory, my belief has always been that winning poker players are necessary for the success of poker. While a certain number of people play poker because they just want to gamble, a large percentage of the people play poker because they know that it's a beatable game and they want to, whether it's in the near term or a distant dream, they want to develop the skills and potentially be able to become a pro. And so being able to see those pros living a life that other people might desire, that propels a lot of people to play poker in the first place and especially to choose it over roulette or slots or whatever the case may be. What I'm wondering is by making this move, does GG think otherwise? Let's say they push the pros out, they get more recreational players, they're playing more. The data is gonna show them that it's working for many years. And once five years from now, there are no longer pros winning those games and pros making videos like this, um, talking about the success that they've had or teaching you from a place of having had a lot of success. That's when we might start to see the constriction of, of the kind of funnel of players coming in. We'll see fewer players coming into poker because they don't have those poker idols to look up to as much. And that's gonna take a really long time to show in a site's data. So one of my fears is that they have this plan and they're gonna be proven right um, for a long time before eventually proven wrong. And at that point, it might be a little bit too late to, to kind of re-row poker online uh, the way that it was. It, it's interesting because poker stars crushed for a very long time, they were industry leader. And I didn't approach things like this at all 
and they had all the same data. They had a lot of player data. Why didn't they push up the rake at mid stakes, high stakes, if this is such a smart move or if it is a smart move at all? At the head of Poker Stars back then uh, was Isai Scheinberg. I've worked with a lot of people that worked for Poker Stars, and the way that they speak about Isai reminds me of the way people viewed uh, Steve Jobs in that he was opinionated, he was tough, but he had so much respect and he was so inspiring to all the people that worked for him. He's not a you know pro poker player, but he loved the game and he had a belief in kind of the, the beauty of poker in the way a lot of professionals do. And it was important to him that professionals win, just uh, morally, it was important to him. That was his view of how poker should work. He did, in many cases, forego extra profit because of his belief in poker being a beatable game. I mean, all these changes that Poker Stars made that scared me were after he sold the company. Even though Poker Stars didn't go fully that route, the signs were there for a reason. So what does this mean for the future of online poker? Honestly, I have no idea. We're gonna have to wait and see how GG responds to these boycotts. We're gonna have to wait and see how the games end up looking over the coming year, two years, three years. And then we're gonna see if others follow suit. I've heard theories like, you know, GG must be desperate right now. They must be running out of money. I don't think any of those things are true. I think they, they have a plan. They think this will improve their business. We'll see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that I hope that GG is wrong about their assumptions. I hope that this is not something that is better for business because if it is better for business, if pushing pros out of the games is better for business, then there's not really a good reason for them to go back. So hopefully they're wrong, but I fear that they might not be. If you're interested, like I am, in seeing how this progresses, I would suggest following uh, George, who's uh, at George underscore YMB on Twitter, and to check out the 2 plus 2 thread that he linked that is also linked in the description here, as we'll see how the boycott progresses. Uh, and of course, follow me on Twitter and here on YouTube, because this is an issue that is kind of near and dear to my heart. It's something that I'm going to follow closely. Until next time, good luck out there and take care.